Well, the Canadian real estate market is poised for another big change as a result of something that happened this past June. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you the whole scenario, including what effect it might have on real estate prices for the second half of 2021. But first, really quickly, if you'd like to stay up to date on the Surrey, Fraser Valley or Canadian marketplace for that matter, please click and subscribe as we try and grow this channel up to over 1000 subscribers. And if you could please hit the like button to help get this information out to other people also looking for real estate information. And in this specific video, 100% of likes received will go directly towards funding cute pictures of large dogs in Karish Team Swag. So thank you very much for doing that. And now let's get back to the topic at hand. In early 2021, all of the talk in Canadian real estate was about record low inventory along with record low interest rates. Those two things combined with people being locked down in their houses and wanting more space to be locked down in led to prices rising in real estate across the entire country at a never before seen pace. Well, finally, in May and June, in my marketplace of Surrey, BC in the Fraser Valley, we saw some relief. Now, prices didn't necessarily come down in those months. However, we did see our current listing inventory rise to over 5,700 active listings at one point. What this did is give some relief to buyers because now they had more to pick from and you didn't have so many buyers bidding on just one property at a time. They actually had the ability to maybe not get into a competing offer and usually inserting conditions back into the deal and therefore avoiding the dreaded unconditional offer. But then something happened in June that has changed the game and that thing is that BC and, well, for that matter, most of the country started opening back up. Things opening back up means that people are wanting to go on vacation after being locked down in their house for over a year, maybe almost close to a year and a half. And as a result, vacations don't exactly go very well with wanting to move. So those people that might be looking for some relief from their current home because it's too small are getting that in short-term vacations rather than looking at putting their properties on the market. And I kind of hate to be the one to point this out, but that relief that we saw here in May and June in my marketplace of Surrey, BC in the Fraser Valley, much like the rest of Canada has been now short-lived because those people are now enjoying their vacations and not bringing more properties to the market. And this is causing our market place to slide right back into a spot where we have very, very good demand, but at the exact same time, we have dwindling inventory or supply. However, all this stuff is easy for a real estate agent to say that the market is picking up, and as a result, prices are probably going to start increasing faster again. However, I don't believe in just blabbing it. I'm going to show you the hard numbers because it's very hard to dispute the numbers, and I believe that showing you these stats uh, real live so you have all of the information is only going to lead to your education so you can make better decisions for your own real estate portfolio or just maybe moving your principal residence. So let's dive into the details really quickly for you. Uh, this is our backend system here for Fraser Valley and Vancouver Realtors. Uh, it's called Paragon. And when I sign in every single day, it's password protected. Sorry, folks, you don't have access to this unless you have a real estate license. Uh, I can see here that currently there have been in July, now this is July, the, the statistics that have just posted, there was almost 2,500, just over 2,400 listings brought to the market. Now, this is kind of crazy that we're looking at almost 2000 sales. So you have to think that one in five of those new listings is not selling. But the other four are that is a crazy consumption rate. Usually in any marketplace, uh, anything more than 50% is a really, really good market. And right now we are cruising a lot higher than that. But let's zoom in here and compare it to last year. Actually, you know what? First, let's hop into June because this is all about the difference between June, July, and what it's going to mean in August and the rest of the year. So in June, you'll see that we had almost 3,000 new listings and again, about 2,100 sales. So we had a lot more listings comparatively coming on to the market. But if we look back the previous year to that, we were sitting at almost 30 well it was 3400 listings almost exactly coming on the market in that last July so we are for the sake of argument a thousand listings short this year and look at that we're within five sales difference from this year to last now how is this important and how is it relevant well obviously we have just as many sales as the same time last year 
and not as many listings. So that's causing a problem, causing inventory to dwindle as inventory dwindles and demand stays high. Well, we have prices that start to rise. But I want to point something out here uh, that you may not be thinking about. Last July, after the lockdown, was just the start and the pickup of the market. The market actually got very, very busy after that. And now we're seeing the same number of sales as last year, except with even lower inventory. So what this is saying to me is we're getting into a portion of the year where we should have a lot more inventory and we're already going in shorthanded. Now, traditionally, September is the second busiest market after the spring market, but it looks like the fall market, at least in the Fraser Valley marketplace in BC, is starting off early. Now, I know what you're saying, just because that's what happened last year in a pandemic doesn't mean it's going to be the same thing that happens this year and the market is going to take off. There was a few things last year that were very, very unique. Last summer is when interest rates were still coming down. So I don't think the increases that we'll likely see as a result of this will be as big and as fast and as crazy as they were previously. But let's dive into the historic trends and see exactly where we're at. And I'm going to show you an example of uh, why our inventory is so low. So this is the stat center for the Fraser Valley Real Estate Board, the best stats out there. And this graph that you're looking at that goes up and down every single year is the active listings. So let's go back 10 years. Starting in January 2011, you'll notice that January is the dip every single year. January, December is this kind of bottom that you see. And as the years progress here, you'll see that inventory actually starts to drop down. Back when I started in real estate, well, it was a little bit before this, but let's say uh, July 2012, for instance, there was 9,000 active listings on the market that month, and it was a buyer's market. But as soon as 2015 hit, you'll actually see that those record low, I mean, let, let, sorry, let me back up here. The lows during the early 2010s, if that's a term, were about 5,400 listings. Currently today, we're sitting at about 4,300 on the Fraser Valley board. So our current listings now in the summer, which should be the peak, are actually lower than previous lows in the marketplace. But that all changed in 2015 into 2016 when the market went absolutely crazy. And you'll see here in 2016, the market took off. And we, well, at one point, where were we here? We are at December 2016, 3,400 active listings on the market. The next year, 3,200 active. But again, this is in December and then the market took off and 2018 was actually a bit of a slow year the stress test was implemented and at one point we got to a nice beautiful level of 7100 listings currently on the market and it actually got a little bit easy for a little bit for the buyers but not for the sellers because well the market always has two sides so after a what well, was not a great year in real estate 2018 we dropped down to just over 5,000 listings so now that we're within three years let me pop into the three-year graph so you can kind of see what's going on and uh, again we got close to 7,000 in 2019 or over seven seventy five hundred twenty 20 almost 7,700 in 2019 and then things started to get busy at the beginning of 2020 remember pre-pandemic the market was actually already picking up this flat bit here is March and April of 2020 that was locked down central so you'll see that the listing inventory actually went down at that time and then things went crazy again as we kind of came out of some sort of a heavy heavy lockdown last summer but then as you would expect they would uh, inventory levels dropped at the end of the year. The bottom was December, as it normally always was. And if you go back in these previous years, January should shoot up. Well, January in 2021 barely shot up. And then the worst thing could possibly happen for buyers in February, it went down. February and March and April, it was a very, very competitive market for buyers. Almost every single sale had 5, 10, 15, maybe 25 offers on it, and they were all selling unconditional. 
But then we again started to get some relief as the marketplace just kind of started to get a little bit back to normal. So let's dive back into that. You started to see listings finally come on. And in April, they actually peaked. They were flooding on. We got up to 50, almost 5,700 active listings. Now, this is where things kind of went a little bit south. In May and June, we started talking about opening back up again. And as I said, as we opened up, people started planning their vacations. And when people were planning their vacations, they're not thinking about listing their properties. So in June, when inventory levels should still be rising, it took a dump. And in July, even further. So let me go back here to previous years and see where June and July were, just in the last few years even. June in 2018 was far from the peak. The peak was actually October. In 2019, the peak was June. And then in 2020, the peak again was September. The problem we are having right now is our peak for active listings, believe it or not, was April, the middle of the busiest market. So what we're seeing is inventory has taken a dive at the worst possible time. We were starting to see relief and you should have a bloated summer market with all of the properties that didn't sell from the spring. Uh, they kind of go stale sorry, over the summer and then a lot of them will relist in the fall. So usually right now is when we should have the most amount amount of listings on the market and let's go back to it here our what looks like it could be our dip is in the middle of the year and uh, I mean I'm beating a dead horse here but usually the middle of the year is the high point so what does this all mean well I hate to be the bearer of bad news guys this means that if this trend continues and a ton of new properties don't come to the market soon we are going to be in multiple offers, unconditional, seller's market, under three months of inventory, all over again. And prices are going to increase. But don't let me be all doom and gloom for you buyers out there. Uh, I mean, the sellers are like, yay, this is great. But don't let me be all doom and gloom. I don't think it's going to be anything like what you have seen in the past because Right now, our interest rates are actually starting to ever so slightly increase over time. Last year, they were still coming down, causing the craziness. So I'm hoping that this will not see the 30 and 40% gains that we've seen in some spots. I will tell you that I'm seeing out there personally and the rest of my team as well, condos and townhouses are almost unavailable. What that means is that a lot of houses have gone beyond uh, the average buyer's ability to purchase. So they're actually shifting into townhouses, meaning the family that would have loved to have got the house with the mortgage helper previously is likely looking at a three bedroom townhouse. Therefore, that's the most competitive market. So if you already own a home, this is great news because your equity is going to continue to increase. If you're looking in the market right now, this is telling me what I say all the time. Hurry up and buy because getting into the market is the only way uh, that you can take advantages of these gains that sellers are about to see in the coming months. All we can do is hope that more people are interested in getting their properties on the market. But until that happens, uh, all I can do is help educate you through the process. Remember, the market is not good. The market is not bad. Seller's market, buyer's market, all that stuff. The market just is. And the best thing you can do is educate yourself about it if you're thinking about either buying or selling in that marketplace. And again, my marketplace is Surrey, BC. So if you do need help in Surrey, BC, comment below, reach out, text, email, whatever it is, the easiest way for you to get in touch with us. We'd absolutely love to help you if we can. But if you are looking anywhere in the country, get in touch with a real estate professional. They're going to give you personalized advice for your marketplace. And that is the most important thing because I guarantee you what is happening here in Surrey may not be the same thing that's happening in Nova Scotia or in Ontario or wherever you will happen to be in the country. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out some of our other videos on the channel. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so now. You could join our 1,000 subscriber giveaway of that blue bag back there. We're gonna give away a bunch of swag once we hit 1,000 subscribers. Also remember to follow us on Instagram for property updates and these videos are there too. Thanks so much for watching, we'll see you soon.